Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Options US market update. As you see on your screen, as we do each and every week, we show you the stocks that will be featured in this recording. And as a quick reminder, if there's a particular stock you're interested in, you can go directly to it using the chapters feature in this video. All right, let's get to the chart because whoa, is a red tape today, as they say, uh, a bad tape. The market went to the downside today. We did have some economic news to talk about this week. Uh, a highly anticipated CPI report that came out on Wednesday. And it was interesting because the CPI and the PPI this month kind of flip-flopped from last month. Last month, the CPI was hotter and the PPI was more tame. Uh, but this month, we had the exact opposite. As the CPI report came in a little hotter than expected, that sent things down on Wednesday. Uh, and when you look at uh, the chart of where things are, you can see how this uh, war on inflation has kind of leveled off there. Uh, and that's where this stickiness, uh, I hate to use that word because it's all over the financial media. They always have their catchphrases that they like to use. And everybody is saying that now inflation is sticky. Uh, but there it is on the chart. Then Thursday, the PPI report came out. That's the wholesale prices. And it was kind of tame. It was a little bit more in line and actually uh, a little bit weaker than expected. And so we went back up. Uh, on Thursday. So if we go and take a look at the charts, you can see how this price action unfolded. Uh, there was Wednesday uh, where we moved lower back to the upside on Thursday. And then as I was talking to our alert subscribers in our insiders meeting, that's for alert subscribers only from evotrader.com, uh, that we were still playing with this 520 level. And if we couldn't get back above it rather quickly, we might be looking for something more to the downside. It was gonna be, what does the market view? Do they look at the CPI report? Do they look at the PPI report? Which one do they focus on? Well, obviously they're looking at the fact that inflation is still stubbornly high on the consumer side of things. As we went to the downside today, we take a look at the moving averages. Um, we broke the 10 day moving average. We closed right on it yesterday, but here we are down here now. Uh, if you are bullish and you want to see this rally continue, the one thing that you can hang your hat on uh, is the fact that we're still above the 50-day moving average, and maybe we're just coming down to test that 50-day moving average. The Fed Fund Futures has moved out the rate cut. We're not talking about June anymore. Uh, we're kind of focusing on September. There's a few whispers about July, a few even more about August, but kind of zeroing in on maybe September for the rate cut. So the market is trying to reprice. Are we even gonna get rate cuts this year? And if so, when? Maybe September. But we did hold the 50-day moving average uh, on the S&P. We have not labeled the wave four yet. Uh, so that's a, a positive as well. Technically, we're still in the wave three going through a correction. But if we get much lower, I think the software will then go ahead and label that wave four. Uh, now looking at interest rates, which I think is gonna be really interesting when we look at the queues, but uh, we look at rates. We had a nice doji yesterday. There's a data issue on the CME today, so don't have the actual data from today. Uh, but I can tell you rates backed off a little bit, not a whole lot, but just a slight decline in the 10-year today. But you can see we were pretty separated from the 10-day moving average. You've heard me say this numerous times. No security in any time frame gets very far away from the 10-day moving average. A lot of people have mentioned how they've applied that into their training. Uh, their own trading for overbought and oversold conditions. So a slight back off on rates today, uh, and yet we still had that ugly tape in the markets. When we look at the dollar, uh, the dollar uh, was up again today. We don't want to see this. Uh, it's obviously on the back of rates going to the upside. We don't want to see the dollar get back up into this area up in here, those highs that we saw uh, last fall, uh, because that hurts uh, the profits, the bottom line. Uh, we're in a global economy now and international companies then have to pay the exchange rate, et cetera. Uh, and what's worrisome here is we have just a really well set up zigzag pattern here on the dollar, which does suggest that we may very well go up and test those highs uh, from back last fall. And then within the wave uh, C here, the C wave of the zigzag, we have another zigzag, which means that's a complex uh, zigzag pattern. Uh, and when you look there, uh, both of those are right inside the tap box here as forecast by this software from the hub organization, hubb.com. 
Uh, so it does seem like we're likely to head higher in the dollar. And at some point in time, maybe not in the not too distant future, uh, we're going to see the dollar somewhere in the area of those last fall highs. That's just going to put pressure on earnings once uh, we get deep into earnings season. We're just getting started on earnings. Today, we'll talk about JP Morgan a little bit later. And then the VIX. We had this big move to the upside in the VIX. We've been talking about this kind of uh, uh, channel formation that we had. It looked like maybe we were breaking to the downside out of it. We came right back into it. Uh, so this channel that started uh, last uh, winter, just before the end of the year, uh, and then significant break back out, uh, on this time to the upside, a far more definitive break in the VIX than we had uh, back here at the end of March, where we tried to break a little bit lower. Uh, so now we want to see what happens on Monday. Do we continue with the volatility? Does the market sell off even further? Uh, are we a little too far from the 10-day moving average now, which is way down here? Uh, and maybe the VIX calms down and we see a little bit of a bounce back uh, to start off the week. Uh, that's what I'm going to be watching for uh, on Monday is how the volatility index, the VIX is acting, and therefore what's likely to happen uh, as we move into the market close. Looking at the rest of the uh, U.S. market updates, also been talking about this. We talked about this last night as well. Uh, the Dow seems to be leading the parade to the downside. Notice it has labeled the wave four. We're already at a 33% uh, wave four correction here. The level for support resistance, uh, like 520 was on the SPY, 390 on the Dow, and we've broken significantly below that. We're starting to get into an area where maybe we can start looking for some sort of support. Uh, you could draw your line right through there where we've traded through it, or you can make an argument that that's the area there where we had resistance uh, at the end of last year, the beginning of this year. We broke above it, tested it a bit, and took off. We're right there. So 380 is uh, kind of what we were talking about. If we were going to continue lower, uh, we might find some support there. We'll see if that can hold. Looking at the 10-day moving average on the DIA, the negative thing is we have a bearish cross here between the 10 and 30 day moving averages. The 10 day moving average is the lime green line. The fuchsia colored line is the 30 day moving average. The reason that I put those on the charts is uh, uh, old floor traders told me that they used to look at that for perhaps trend changes. So does that mean that we may have a bit more of a correction? Uh, but certainly the Dow is leading us to the downside uh, versus the other major markets. And talking about the other major markets, looking at the queues, which we've talked about a lot during Trade Finder on Tuesdays. And by the way, if you haven't signed up for Trade Finder, you can do it with the link uh, that you see on your screen now. We do it every Tuesday night, or excuse me, every Tuesday now at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We do it during market hours, uh, which is great. And we are featuring the new Hub software. We have live Elliott waves. So we literally were watching the market tick as we did Trade Finder this past week, and you can do it. And if you haven't gone to hub.com uh, and gotten your free copy of it, it's in beta form. You can get it for free. It's got a number of cool features, including a really nice social media aspect. Reddit just went popular. Uh, they just had their IPO. Uh, they've been popular, but they had their IPO, and there's a a feature there where you can post your own trade ideas and have other people vote on it. So go get yourself a copy of that software at hubb.com if you haven't already. Uh, but also sign up for Trade Finder and join us. Uh, we have a live Q&A there. We look at the markets. We find uh, trade ideas. Uh, it's a great community of people that we have and love to have you join us. Uh, but what we've been talking about uh, in Trade Finder on the queues is, boy, you would think with rates moving up the way I showed you, uh, rates moving up in this wave three to the upside here, you would have thought that the queues would be leading the market to the downside, not the Dow. Uh, but they stayed surprisingly strong. Now, it was a pretty weak day across the board today. Uh, the tech stocks, the MAG7 all had a rough day today, but the queues in general, not so bad. Yeah, it was a downside day, but it wasn't a horrible day uh, on, the, uh, on the queues. Um, and you can see that the 50-day moving average is a bit higher here. Uh, and so we're kind of in that neighborhood. Uh, you could argue that we've been testing it for about a week now. Here we haven't touched it, but we've been in that neighborhood. But it's also right where that support resistance is at 440, and we're barely below that. So the queues have been uh, kind of the leader. Interesting that they're still in a wave five, but haven't corrected more. Uh, where we've had these corrections 
in the S&P and the Dow that were the ones that were in the wave three showing the wave four. Uh, so uh, I find all that very interesting. Now we're going to watch to see if the Qs can hold this 50-day moving average. If they give that up and start to move down, then we're looking for a correction. And if you're not familiar with LA Wave rules, when you have a Wave 5 that moves past 100%, you're not looking for a correction back to the previous four. You're only looking for a correction to the 61.8% Fib corrective level. And that would be this point right here. That's what we would be looking for, and that still holds above the wave three. Uh, so that wouldn't be that surprising at all. Uh, but we have to break that 50-day moving average first. We haven't even gotten back to the 38.2% corrective level. So I've been a little surprised uh, at the strength that the Qs have shown uh, in the face of rates moving uh, to the upside. And I'm going to watch again and see uh, if rates continue to pull back a little bit at the beginning of the week and if we could somehow catch a bid. Uh, in the queues at the beginning of the week. So lots to look at uh, at the beginning of the week. So join us for that live Trade Finder show on uh, Tuesday at one o'clock. Uh, looking at the IWM, a lot of people have I've mentioned in the past, look at the small caps for an idea of risk tolerance in the market. Uh, and we got up to this 210 level. As you know, we've talked about this trading range so many times between 190 and 210. Uh, now notice that the wave five here only went up to the 61.8% FIP level. Uh, which also happened to coincide with 210, and we've been heading down. Uh, now we look at the 10-day moving average here. We're almost getting to the point where we're a touch oversold here on the IDM, uh, IWM with a really ugly day. There's the separation from the 10-day moving average. And note that we're trying to make one of those bearish crosses there with the 10-day crossing below the 30-day. It does seem like the IWM wants to come down and test this level around 190 which coincides with where the wave four is. So I think the IWM, uh, whether or not we get a little bit of a bounce uh, to the upside from this slightly oversold condition at the beginning of the week or not, it looks like maybe we want to go down and test that 190 level there. Bitcoin, boy, Bitcoin can't figure out what it wants to do. It's in this triangle. It gets up to 71,000. It comes back down to 69,000. And all we do is just keep churning in this triangle formation here. Which way are we going to go? The halving is uh, April 18th, uh, as you know, and that's when they cut in half the amount of uh, uh, Bitcoin. So it creates a little bit of a uh, uh, supply demand thing in the positive favor uh, if you're long Bitcoin or the cryptos. Uh, but we just can't seem to get out of this triangle. Right when it looks like we're going to break out and you can see these highs here where it looks like, all right, we're getting up near 72,000. We're ready to go. And then right back down we come. So we're tightening the range. Uh, between 71,000 and 69,000. And when that happens, that usually means that the breakout uh, is going to come sooner rather than later. This is a reminder now, you would think that we're going to break to the upside with the Alvin coming, but um, when you have a triangle that's this well formed, you can break either direction. So you have to be uh, cognizant that we could break downward. Uh, and when we look at Coinbase, uh, some of you mentioned last week, thanks for showing the correlation between the two. The patterns are awfully similar. It was an ugly day uh, with Coinbase today, but when we look at the formation of the triangle, we didn't break out uh, to the downside of that triangle yet either. So both of them with strong moves to the upside and then symmetrical triangles. Some people call those flag patterns. Um, I like to look at it that way because it's the old way that they used to have golf flags where they are triangles. Now they're all rectangles. Uh, and some people prefer uh, to use a flag pattern as uh, this rectangular formation where you have uh, the uh, strong move to the upside, which is the, uh, the flagpole, if you will. Uh, and then you have more of a you know, kind of a uh, rectangular type of a flag forming there. But nonetheless, uh, I like these patterns from a breakout standpoint. Uh, because of the fact that when you have a big move up and it consolidates into a symmetrical triangle, it's going to break out. You don't know which direction, but it's going to move. So we're going to get some movement very soon, I think, out of Bitcoin and Coinbase. I don't think I'm really going out on a limb there, um, but that's going to happen uh, in the not too distant future. Stocks of interest. And by the way, just a quick reminder that we are giving away one of our level three subscriptions each and every month. Uh, this year, it's worth thousands of dollars. Uh, the uh, L3 includes the impulse, which is based by AI. 
uh, directional strategy. We're in our seventh plus month now without a losing month since we've infused that search with AI. Uh, so we've got a great track record. You can find it at our website at evotrader.com. You're going to get that. You're going to get the volatility strategy, which is breakouts from these kind of triangles, as well as our AI based time strategy, which is a sideways strategy uh, where the AI tells us the likelihood of a stock. Uh, following a big drop, staying in uh, a one standard deviation range. So breakouts, uh, directional moves, and um, sideways moves. And people ask, well, does the impulse strategy include downward moves? And yes, it does. So the bearish scores are coming up on the AI. We haven't had a bearish score high enough yet. We might after today's move uh, to actually put on bearish trades, but the directional patterns work both to the upside and the downside. So if you get a little concerned about a further correction in the market, that's where you wanna be. Uh, so all you have to do to register is post a comment under this video, you're automatically in the drawing. And again, we're giving one away each and every month this year. Uh, all right, so some of your comments, questions of stocks that you've been looking at, stocks of interest, if you will. Uh, Tesla does not wanna give up 160. We've talked about this for a long time. Uh, I'm not gonna go show you the chart again, uh, because if we break 160, then we could be looking at a whole Katie bar the door scenario down uh, in the 100 area. I saw some of your comments were saying you could see uh, Tesla down around 120, uh, but this is so heavily institutionally owned. Um, we're getting some uh, buying uh, just enough to hold it off from breaking that level. But now look what's happening here uh, with Tesla. We're starting to get a little bit of a triangle formation here. It's not a large triangle, uh, but it's a triangle nonetheless. And if it broke out to the downside, it's probably enough to break below that 160 level. So we'll be watching that. When we look at the DMI, you can see how the ADX is diving down. That's one of the indicators that I look at. I like the DMI and you watch the ADX. We're usually looking for an ADX moving to the upside to confirm strength of a directional move, but it works the opposite way as well. When you have a very low ADX, it's telling you the stock is trendless. And the lower that ADX goes, the sooner the breakout is likely to come. And when I look at an ADX below 13, which is right where we are now, um, that tells you that the breakout is pretty imminent. So I think uh, it's highly likely that we'll see a breakout of Tesla next week. So we'll be watching to see, does it break to the upside? Now the two keys here, if it breaks to the upside, it probably gets above 180. And if we can somehow get above 180, then the next point of resistance to the upside is 200. I don't really know where the catalyst would be to drive the stock higher. I know last week Elon came out after uh, the recording Friday and said the robo taxi is coming out soon to try to put a little bid in there. It got a little bit of a bid and then back down. Um, but uh, I don't know if he can keep tweeting something every time to uh, keep the stock from breaking down. Um, but uh, we're going to be watching those two levels on the breakout of this triangle. Do we break below 160? Do we break above 180? So once again, if we break above 180, we're likely going to go test 200. If we break below 160, then watch out below on Tesla. Uh, who knows where we can end? Now, one that did break its support is Boeing. You all been asking about Boeing an awful lot. And we talked about 180 being a really important level on Boeing. It needed to hold 180 uh, and it didn't. It's broken below it. It bounced off of it once there in mid-March. And we had the easy trades I talked about where we had a oversold condition there. We bounced up, got in the neighborhood of testing that resistance at 200. I just don't think uh, as enticing as it is on Boeing that you can go long until we're back above 200. Well, now we're gonna have to get back above 180 first. Uh, and then when you go back and look, all right, well, where's the next area? It's all the way down at 140 is the next area of support on Boeing. So we might be headed in that area there. And if we can't hold 140, you could be talking about 120. Uh, on Boeing. But that is a clean, significant break with follow through. So uh, nobody is too excited about jumping in uh, to the long side on Boeing right now. Uh, it sure is enticing. It is to me as well uh, to see Boeing down here. But when it breaks the, a level of support like that 180 level, then you just have to look that there's likely more downside to come uh, before uh, Boeing uh, writes the ship, uh, so to speak. Uh, you ask about, hey, can you look at some international markets uh, other than uh, just the U.S. and the INDA that we've been looking at, uh, the EEM? So here's emerging markets, ugly day-to-day -day as well, along with uh, our market. You can see it's had a really nice 
five wave to the upside pattern, just a really classic pattern there. Uh, we got up to just above the 100% level, broke down today. Uh, we're testing the 50-day moving average on the EEM uh, as well. Uh, and we're also in the neighborhood of that wave three high. So we want to see uh, if you're long these markets or you want to be long these markets, we need to hold right here. So we're testing the 50-day moving average. We're testing the top of the wave three. If we start to break down further, uh, then once again, you're looking at that 61.8% correction uh, at least. Uh, and uh, that brings us all the way down here to just above 39. So we could be looking at that 39 level there on the EEM. Now we are just a touch oversold. We've gapped down uh, and uh, there's a separation with the 10 day moving average here. So maybe a little quick bounce at the beginning of the week, possibly uh, on the heels of this 50 day moving average and that wave three high, uh, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but it seems like maybe uh, we could be looking at 39 on the EEM, uh, even after some sort of a quick bounce. Even oil gave us a little bit of a break today. It looked like it was gonna take off. We had this real tiny triangle. We talked about that last night uh, as well. Uh, and it broke out, but couldn't hold it. Uh, and back we came right to the point of the triangle. We look at the 10 day moving average there. We're also dead smack on the 10 day moving average. I can tell you, uh, filling up the Hellcat is not fun at the gas pump right now and uh, prices are probably gonna continue to go higher uh, on gas. Uh, but oil did back off this previous wave five high from back in September. Look, we went exactly to it. So is that a double top? Is that gonna be the end of the run? Uh, at least for now, it's in a wave three. It's not overbought from the 10 day moving average. Um, but uh, if you're long oil, you didn't wanna see it break above this high from September anyway, cause it would have been a bit overbought at that point in time. And when you break a major point of resistance and you're already overbought, it tends not to hold. So you wanna see it consolidate here a little bit and then try and break above the highs if you're long the USO. Uh, but for now, we just have to look and see, are we double topping here uh, in this formation and due for a bit of a correction in oil? Uh, you know uh, you know how it works. When oil goes up, you feel it the next day at the gas pump. When oil goes down, it takes weeks or months before prices come down. Uh, you know, conspiracy theory stuff there, but that's how it works. And I'm sure you've all experienced it uh, at the gas pump as well. But uh, uh, oil hitting that uh, way five high back from September, I think was significant. Gold, boy, it was off to the races early and then gave it back. Uh, but we had gotten just a little bit ahead of ourselves, I think. On gold, uh, you can see the high there on the GLD was pretty separated from the 10 day moving average. Uh, we had a little bit of a move back down there uh, on uh, Wednesday. I thought we might come all the way down and let the 10 day moving average catch up. It didn't work out that way. Back up, we went yesterday and then rocketing, at least in early trade today, um, before uh, reversing and closing near the low. Uh, so I don't think that's too much of a surprise. It was just this was almost like a FOMO thing on gold. People are like, I got to get into gold because it's running like crazy and I've missed this move. Uh, so up here at the high of the day was just too far away from the 10 day moving average and it reversed. It's a good example of what I talk about why you don't want to break a resistance point when you're already overbought because it tends to reverse back down. I don't think the move is over in gold or silver yet. Uh, I really think that we're going higher uh, on those, but we just had gotten a little ahead of ourselves a little bit overbought and a little bit of rest, uh, I think makes sense. In fact, if we take the GLD chart out a little further and go to the weekly chart, you can really see how overbought we are. It's good to look at the weekly charts every now and then. Um, and you can see that, yeah, gold is significantly overbought, especially on that high today. So we finished the week back down here, but we're still a bit in overbought condition. What goes vertically up often comes vertically back down. So you don't wanna chase that kind of a move. We had a couple of great trades at ewotrader.com on the AEM. That was our gold play. Um, we're out of both of those. We were out of them before today. Um, and so we took advantage of the move up uh, in gold. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're a bit overbought and maybe a little more rest uh, is in order here for the GLD. And then looking at JP Morgan, they had their earnings today. The earnings report was fine. The earnings report was good, but they gave uh, a warning on guidance, it was the guidance that was the problem where they said that uh, interest rates moving to the upside is gonna hurt them. 
uh, moving forward. And if you're not real familiar with how the financials work, uh, financials perform better when rates are lower. So when the rates go up, it does put pressure on them. Uh, and so that's why JP Morgan had such a rough day today. Again, it wasn't on the actual earnings. It was on the guidance that came out uh, and uh, big gap down, uh, maybe a touch oversold here. We'll see if we get some follow through there. Uh, it had 155% wave five extension. So if we take a look at where that 61.8% uh, FIB correction is on JP Morgan, looks like a little more to the downside here, down around 178 and a half or so, which does coincide with the top of that wave three. So that makes sense. So maybe a little more follow through here also makes sense because I think rates are gonna stay higher for longer to quote Chairman Powell. Uh, he's been saying that and uh, it seems like that's gonna come to fruition. So with all that said, hope you all enjoy a great weekend. Thanks for viewing, look forward to talking again soon. Take care everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.